Hey, welcome to the Biochemistry Academy, where we teach all biochemistry courses. Well, in today's video, we will talk about enzyme assays. So, what are enzyme assays? Enzyme assays are simply a laboratory method used for measuring enzymatic activity. We should understand that this enzyme assay are vital for the study of enzyme kinetics and enzyme inhibition because an assay is simply an act of measuring how fast a given amount of enzyme will convert substrate into products so enzyme assays measure either the disappearance of substrate over time or the appearance of products over time so let's talk about the measurement of enzyme activity. The truth is enzymes are usually present in very small quantities in biological fluid. So therefore enzymes are not directly measured, but they are commonly measured in terms of their catalytic activity. We measure how much work it performs, meaning the catalytic activity of the enzyme. that is able to convert substrate to product. Now, the enzymatic activity is a reflection of its concentration because the activity is proportional to the concentration. Now, you are going to look at the types of enzyme assays. Enzyme assays can be split into two groups according, according to their sampling methods. These are continuous assay and discontinuous assay. In the continuous assay, the assay give a continuous reading of the activity of the enzyme, meaning that multiple measurements are taken and these are usually the absorbance change that are made during the reaction or they are continuously read by a continuous Recording spectrophotometer. Continuous assay are the most convenient, with one assay giving the rate of reaction with no further work necessary. Now, there are different types of continuous assay, which are one spectrophotometric assay. This is the most common method of detection of enzyme assay. This type of assay uses a spectrophotometer to measure the amount of light a substrate absorbs to combine the kinetic measurement and Beer's law by calculating the appearance of products or disappearance of substrate. Now, this type of assay it is simple and it is non-destructive. Now, the next type of continuous assay is fluorometric assay. Remember, fluorescence is when a molecule emits light of one wavelength after absorbing light of different wavelengths. So, fluorometric assay use a difference in fluorescence of substrate from products to measure the enzyme reaction now, the assay is more sensitive than the spectrophotometric assay, but can suffer from interference that is caused by impurities. Now, the next type of continuous assay is calorimetric assay. Remember, calorimetry is the measurement of heat released or absorbed by chemical reaction. These assays are general since many reactions involve some changes in heat and with the use of a microcalorimeter, not much enzyme or substrate is required. This assay can be used to measure reactions that are impossible to assay in any other way. The next type of continuous assay are the chemiluminescent 
and chemiluminescent is the emission of light by a chemical reaction. Some enzymes produce light and this can be measured to detect the product formation. It is extremely sensitive since the light produced can be captured by photographic films over days or weeks but it can be hard to quantify because not all the lights released by a reaction will be detected. The next type of continuous assay are the light scattering assay and also the microcell thermophoresis. Next, let us talk about this continuous assay. Now, in this assay, the samples are taken after the reaction is stopped and then the concentration of the substrate and products are determined. Now, the reaction proceeds in a designated time and the reaction is stopped usually by inactivating the enzyme and these enzymes are inactivated by weak acids. So let us look at the types of discontinuous assay. There are two types of discontinuous assay, which are the radiometric assay and the chromatographic assay. In the radiometric assay, in this type of discontinuous assay, it uses a radiometric instrumentation to measure the enzyme activity. Then in the chromatographic assay, it is it also a type of discontinuous assay that uses chromatographic instrumentation such as HPLC or TLC to measure and understand the activity of the enzyme. So let us look at the features of a good enzyme assay. A good enzyme assay it is simple and specific and it is rapid, meaning that one does not need to wait for weeks or months for the results to appear. And another feature of a good enzyme assay it is that it is easy to use, it is sensitive, and it is also economical don't forget to like share and subscribe to the biochemistry academy for more content like this arikato see you in our next video